Hi guys! I thought it would be fun to test out my new mic and do a get ready with me to show my complete morning skincare and makeup routine as I get ready to go to yoga class because I've never done a full length one before. A little bit of information about me if you didn't come here from my Instagram. I'm 43. I have normal skin. I live in Southern California so the weather is pretty warm. I have a lot of sun to contend with and the humidity is insanely high. So the goal for today's get ready with me was to achieve glowy but not greasy skin and a nice simple look as I just go to yoga class and probably will just keep the look the rest of the day as long as I don't get too sweaty and need a shower right afterwards. So let's get to it. Okay, first things first, not shown, I wash my face. So there's some debate about whether it's better to actually wash your face with cleanser in the morning or just rinse with water. As with most things skincare, this depends a lot on your skin. If your skin is super dry, if it's super sensitive, or if you have conditions like eczema, it may be better to minimize the amount of times that you use an actual cleanser and just rinse with water when you don't really need cleanser. I don't have these conditions and I like a really clean canvas for my skincare, so I always wash in the morning with an actual cleanser. I usually keep at least three cleansers open in my shower. I will have a super, super gentle one, a super gentle one, and a not as gentle, like more deep cleansing one. However, because all the cleansers I use are low pH and use gentle surfactants, like the default is it's not gonna be super harsh or stripping. I used a really heavy occlusive cream at the end of my skincare last night, so I went with the least gentle option that I have, the Cozarex snail gel cleanser, which I love. I've bought a bunch of tubes of this and used them and the brand has sent me a few tubes too. It is a pH around six gel cleanser. It doesn't foam a ton. It has a super slippery, like super fun texture that doesn't drag it all on skin. And I find that it cleanses thoroughly enough for me when I do have like really heavy nighttime skincare to clean off. So that was my first step. So as an extra step for eyes, I've been using the Innisfree Green Tea Seed Hyaluronic Acid Eye Serum. I haven't been using this long enough to have any real substantial feedback on it. I don't have super high expectations of it. I'm treating it as just an extra hydrating layer that's not greasy. It's fun. It has a nice little rollerball applicator here. And then you just like pull the trigger a little bit to click up some product to apply. The rollerball applicator feels really nice, as you would expect. It's a nice little massage step. If your eyes are sensitive to fragrance, this is not going to be a good product for you because it does have their green tea line fragrance in it. And it, I mean, it's pretty fragrancy. My eyes sometimes get bothered by fragrance, but it doesn't seem to be a problem with this product. So I'll keep using it. But again, I don't have super high expectations of this. Like it's really just a little bit of extra plumping without Mm, any like strong actives that would do anything substantial for the skin around my eyes but eye skin does tend to get more dry than regular face skin so I do like an extra step there. I don't like using stronger exfoliating actives or retinoids in the morning. Now it's not because you're not supposed to use them in the morning because sunlight will degrade them. That's not really an issue. I just don't have the patience to wait the wait times for those to dry and sink in before moving on to next steps in my morning skincare. So I like a peptide product in the morning. I would normally use the Neod Copper Amino Isolate Serum. That's my like holy grail pe copper peptide product, but I am trying the Ordinary's Multi-Peptide, um, yeah, Multi-Peptide Plus Copper Peptides 1% Serum. The reason that I had to look at the bottle is because this is a new name for the Ordinary's Buffet serum, which they've told me they haven't changed the product at all. It's just the name. When I used that product before, I didn't really see much benefit from it, but I'm just giving it another shot. Still that same blue serum. Um, and one thing that I do like about the Ordinary's version over the Neod version is it's a thicker like gel type serum. It's just easier to apply. So the Neod Case 3 is like a super thin, runny, watery product. It's hard to apply it without like losing some product because it just drips down off your hands. So that bothers me. So at least with this one, it's thick enough that it just goes where you want it to. And as you can see, I take all my skincare all the way down here. Because this skin, I find, is much more similar to your face skin than it is to your body skin. And it, you know, sometimes you notice that people like their face doesn't really match their neck or chest, which I'm trying to avoid. So the only products that I don't use below my chin are strong actives because my neck skin especially is like 
much more thin and sensitive than my face, and it tends to get bothered really, really quickly from strong actives. But something like a copper peptide serum or the rest of my steps, they always go just, you know, all the way down to the upper titty region. And this sinks in really fast, which I like. Like just in the amount of time that I've been talking about it, it's pretty much dried down and absorbed, so I can just go on to my next steps. And I'm trying to be thorough and show actually all the steps. So my next step is actually the Grande Lips Hydrating Lip Plumper. So this is the plumper from the same brand that makes Grande Lash, Grande Brow. They make the Grande Hair Serum that I talked about in my hair regrowth video. I love this. It's such a nice like lip hydrator, moisturizer, and it's a non-sticky gloss. But the packaging is a little bit annoying. So it uses this like clicky dispenser. I would call it an airless pump, but it usually gets like at least one air bubble in it when I get it. So I can't really say that. It just, when you click it, it takes forever for the product to come out. So sometimes that gets on my nerves, but I mean, I really like the plumping effect. I like the way that it feels, so I will live with it. But this is a good opportunity to talk about some PR that I got recently. So I was sent the City Beauty Plumping Lip Oil and plumping lip gloss. So I tried those yesterday and these are like an instant no. So the lip oil smells and tastes really weird. I put it on before bed and I had to take it off like two minutes later because I couldn't deal with the smell or the taste. I can't even describe it. It's just an odd, almost plasticky sort of scent. And then the gloss is just way too sticky. It's like that kind of lip gloss that feels like your hair gets stuck to it, cat hair gets stuck to it. Um, it, these do seem to have a nice plumping effect thanks to the hydrating ingredients in them, but these are, I'm not going to use these. I'm just going to stick with my grande. A train passed by right when I was putting on and talking about my next layer and it threw me off completely, but I was going to do two layers of this anyway, so we'll just start over with that. When the weather is super, super humid like it is now, and I want glowy skin, but I don't want to be greasy or sticky, I stick to very, very light hydrating layers. So for a hydrating toner, I'm using the Misha Time Revolution Red Algae Treatment Essence. This is a product that I actually was first introduced to because I did some sponsored content for Misha, like I think it was late 2020, that included this product. I loved it so much that I've bought it since then and they've sent me more. I think this bottle is one that they sent me. So this is a hydrating toner, but it's quite different from most hydrating toners that you might see because it doesn't contain hyaluronic acid, which I love, but hyaluronic acid toners can sometimes leave a little bit of a sticky or tacky finish, which again is not really what we want in super humid weather. This uses red algae extract as the main humectant, and so that will hold water against your skin. It will help your skin stay hydrated, but the nice thing about algae and seaweed extracts is I notice they have an emollient effect. So they will sink into the microscopic crevices in the surface of your skin and just give a much smoother there is skin texture. I remember noticing this with like the first seaweed based product that I ever tried years and years ago and I just fell in love with it because it's like instantly firming effect. This essence is very light. It sinks in really fast. So when I do want like a couple of layers of hydration to get like that really bouncy dewy glow, I can just layer on more than one layer. When it sinks in, it doesn't leave any stickiness behind at all for me. It just makes my skin plumper, more hydrated, more supple and smoother on the surface. So I do want some snail in my routine because I almost always try to keep snail in my skincare routine. I know that snail is another one of those ingredients that there's a lot of debate about within the skincare community because you will hear it's just humectant, like snail mucin extract is just a humectant. It's just for hydrating. It doesn't have other effects and that's fair. So there's not a lot of research into the use of snail secretion filtrate as a skincare ingredient. It's just kind of the way that research works. There's not unlimited funding to fully like double blind, placebo, etc. like long-term, large-scale study. Every single trending ingredient that's out there. So I will just give an anecdote. So there is some limited small promising research that indicates that snail mucin does have like wound healing properties for human skin that it may help to repair, repair photo damage. Again, these are really limited studies. I can't say conclusively the way that you can with something like a retinoid or a vitamin C, what they do for skin, but just anecdotally, when I use Cozarex snail products specifically, 
I see effects that go way beyond hydration, like my skin bounces back from things like breakouts and irritation faster. It feels more resilient. It feels more elastic in ways that just piling on layers of hyaluronic acid doesn't. So that's just my anecdote. I mean, I have been using Cozarex nail products for pretty much the entire time that I've had my blog almost. So I started that in 2015 and I think I started using the Cozarex nail products in late 2015. If that gives you any indication of how loyal I am to these products and the difference that I feel when I do stop using them for a while, just to check. There's a train passing by, so I'm just gonna put this on while it passes by and try not to get thrown off. I am using the Advanced Nail Radiance Dual Essence. This is the Cozarex nail essence that combines their original snail essence here that's like this pretty much the snail 96 with a niacinamide serum. So you kind of get like a two in one of a mild gentle brightening product and the effects of the snail. And I really like the dual chamber pump. This is like one of my favorite things. So I'm just gonna pump out a couple of pumps here. The fact that this is the snail essence mixed with a lighter niacinamide serum makes this lighter. It absorbs faster than the Snail 96 Essence, and because it's so, so humid today, I feel that the Snail 96 might be just a little bit too heavy to wear for day under sunscreen and things like that, so that's why I'm going with this one. Again, I'm putting all the skincare all the way down on my neck and chest, especially because I have like a lot of sun damage on my chest that I'm going to be continually working on probably for years. Um, so that is my Snail snip Step once they get to the end of my hydrating steps, I like to let them sink in for a few minutes before I move on to moisturizer. And since I'm trying to be complete about showing my getting ready routine, this is when I take my vitamins. Um, so I don't really like to eat breakfast in the morning. I'm usually just not hungry before like mid afternoon. I only eat breakfast if I like go out to breakfast with my boyfriend or something like that, but I will eat my gummies. Um, all of these are provided by the brand, but I've been taking them all pretty much since they came out. So the most important one for me is the Goalie Women's Multi Gummy. So these are the ones that I talked about in my hair regrowth video. I'm pretty sure that the biotin in these is a major part of why my hair finally stopped like falling out of my head in clumps every time I took a shower and why it's been growing back in well. Also why my nails can grow in long now and they're like strong as hell like they're basically unbreakable and they used to be so like soft and peely and easy to rip and break and I would just like never have long nails because they just couldn't survive at any length past my fingertips but anyway so I take two of the women's multis these are gummies and they can get kind of sticky and I just don't like things that are sticky on my fingers so I usually use chopsticks or a fork to dig them out um don't worry, I'm not gonna make this into like an ASMR channel. I'm gonna cover my mouth. You don't have to watch me eating. Um, but again, just to show my full routine. and I take three of their apple cider vinegar gummies. Okay, so I've talked a lot about these on my Instagram over the last, also it's almost three years I've been taking these. I thought that apple cider vinegar, the whole ACV thing was just like another woo woo, whatever, you know, like crunchy wellness trend. Um, I had tried these just because whatever, there is some interesting information about apple cider vinegar and what it can do for your digestive system and your blood sugar regulation. Not a doctor, not a diagnosis. I didn't have anything that was like diagnosable, but when I take these, my digestion functions so much better. I'm not gonna go into detail about what I mean, but I think that if I tell you that like my digestive activities are much improved in many ways, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I've gotten a lot of messages from friends and followers that start taking them and they, a lot of people have also seen similar benefits. Um, I used to like just crash after I ate any significant amount of carbs, like, you know, a sandwich or pasta or something like that, um, which is a blood sugar crash. And for me, again, I don't have anything diagnosable. This is not medical advice, but there is some evidence um, that apple cider vinegar can help with just regulating blood sugar 
levels and it does seem to work for me. These, all of these gummies have a little bit of sugar each in them, so I think that on days when I'm going to yoga later and I'm not eating breakfast, maybe they help give me a little bit of like quick energy that I can't say for sure, but that is like, this is basically my breakfast, so I take three of these. I'm sorry, please tell me if I ever do this again, please tell me in the comments if I should just mute or cut out or speed up the chewing. I'm like really trying to figure out what works for people here. And I take the Goalie Beats cardio gummies. They're not for cardio exercise. Their claim with these is that the COQ10 in these supplements helps with just supporting heart health. That's not really something that I could possibly be able to discuss in a review is like something that I could notice a change in. Um, I just take them because they taste really good and possibly the antioxidants in these could just be helpful overall, maybe even for skin health. So I take two of these. Or three if I don't feel like fighting to separate out another separate one and they're stuck together. Um, I tell people all, all this a lot with these gummies and just gummy vitamins in general. Put them in your fridge because it helps a lot with the stickiness and I find that somehow it actually like improves the taste a little bit. Like all of these are tasty but I really like the ACV ones when they're chilled. So that's just a little thing that I wanted to mention. It only took a few minutes, um, the snail has sunk in, everything else has sunk in, so we can move on to eye cream and moisturizer. Eye cream, no matter what the weather is, typically I'm going to use the Sawasu Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Eye Cream. This one the brand provided for me. I love this eye cream, oh my god, I know it's expensive. Um, so I said I'm 43, obviously at this age I will start seeing some like crepey texture, fine lines, things like that around my eyes, a little bit of sagging. So this is one of the very, very few eye creams I've found that really addresses those. I feel, for me, it like really plumps up and smooths out the fine lines. Um, it gives an overall tighter, less crepey appearance. I use a little, little bit because I have to be really careful with creams around my eyes. I have lash extensions and you can't get anything that has oil on them because that will break down the adhesive and then the extensions will come out faster. Um, look, if I'm looking like off into a weird direction, it's because I'm using my phone screen as a mirror here. And this is like, this is what you see if I'm looking directly at my face in the phone screen. Um, other eye cream options that I do like are the Cozarex, not the Cozarex eye cream, but the regular Cozarex Snail 92. Snail cream, I used that for years too. I was very loyal to it because it also has like a really intense smoothing effect for me. Like basically it irons everything out. However, as I got older, I started to feel that the Snail 92 was not really moisturizing enough for my eye area. So I don't use that as much unless I like for whatever reason I'm feeling like my eye area doesn't need as much moisture as usual. The Solasu eye cream is much richer. It moisturizes more, and that's what my eyes need right now. Another eye cream that I really enjoy is the Aquel Licorice Eye Cream. Again, that has like some similar effects as far as smoothing goes, but I'm also finding that that's not quite moisturizing enough for my area at this moment in time. So that's why I chose the Solasu over the other two. And now the moisturizer step. So when it's really, really humid and my skin doesn't really feel like it needs a ton of richness anyway, I choose a very, very lightweight, usually gel or gel cream moisturizer. So I'm going with one of my favorites, the Innisfree Dewy Glow Jelly Cream. It's the in the cherry blossom line. Um, this I first tried because the brand sent me some and then this is another one of those products that I love so much that I will just buy it for myself. Sometimes just as a little like tangent on PR, Depending on my relationship with the brand, if I want 
like replen of something that I've been using from them. So with some brands, I'll ask them if they can just send me more and I've never had an issue with that like they do. But with other brands, if we just don't have that close or long standing of a relationship, I feel like very shy to ask for stuff like that outside of whatever they're sending out on their PR list for campaigns anyway. So that's with Innisfree, that's one of those, like if I don't happen to have any on hand and I want more, I just buy it myself. Um, so I bought this one during the Prime Day sale. Oh my God, this moisturizer is so fun. It's actually a jelly. I know it's really, really hard to see on camera, but it's like a clear jiggly jelly kind of cream. So the thing about super light moisturizers like this, especially gels and gel creams, is that you do kind of have to use a lot. Um, so I go through any of this type of moisturizer pretty quickly. So that's why I have to like buy more. And going back to our kind of aesthetic goal for the day, which is glowy, but not greasy. I always mix one pump of the Neod Photography Fluid which I do just ask them for more of this when I want more. So this is provided by the brand at my request. This is an interesting product. I didn't understand it at first. The first time that I tried it, I thought that you should just use it as like a liquid highlighter, like just put it on the highlighter areas and I don't, and it's like not great for that, but I started mixing it into my moisturizer and it's like so good for providing this um, sort of almost indescribable like inner glow look without being shiny without being oily or sparkly or glittery which are not things that I want all over my face just glowy so if you look into this there's two different versions there's the opacity 12% and the opacity 8% I have the 12% the real difference is just like the tone of the product so the 12% is a more like cooler pearly pale tone and then the 8% is a more golden, like slightly deeper tone. It's not like it's a base product. It's not going to match or not match your skin visibly, but it's just something to keep in mind to find the one that's more suited for your skin tone. Um, I had both and I just found that the 8 was giving me like a little bit more of a golden look than really fully matched to my skin. So I stick with the 12. So those are mixed together. And the pump, it doesn't come with the pump. You have to buy the pump separately from Neon. The photography fluid on its own just comes with a dropper, like typical little simple eyedropper. I think a lot of that is because that is a slightly more eco-friendly um, option that you can recycle the glass part of the dropper, but like the dropper is just stupid for this texture of product because it's a thicker, more viscous, liquid it tends to like cling to the outside of the dropper it just gets a bit messy and you feel like you lose a lot of product that way but the pump makes it perfect and then one pump is like perfect dose to mix into moisturizer to go again reiterating all the way down so with moisturizers like the Innisfree one they don't take that long to absorb at all so I don't have anything else that I need to show while it's sinking in so I will just be back in about five minutes and we'll do sunscreen and move on. So now that the moisturizer is dried down, we are ready for the last and the most important part of my skincare routine every day. No matter what season it is, no matter what the weather looks outside, always going to be sunscreen. So if you're new to my skincare content or you need a refresher, UV radiation, particularly UVA radiation, is responsible for the vast majority a visible skin aging that we see. It's not just wrinkles and it's not just the sagging from collagen breakdown, loss of elasticity, but it's also things like blotchy, uneven skin texture, dark spots, that kind of like rough, coarse, leathery appearance that very sun damaged skin gets. UVA radiation is present year round. UVA radiation penetrates cloud cover. So for that reason, I sunscreen almost every day. Like I won't do it if I know I'm not gonna leave the house, but if I'm leaving at all, I sunscreen, it's really humid, and I know I'm gonna sweat a lot in yoga class because I know what this teacher is like and my yoga class is right in the middle of the day. So I am going with a waterproof, sweatproof, humidity-proof sunscreen. It's Japanese, it's the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence, which is like super holy grail for me, and you'll see why. But 
if you shop for the sunscreen, be really careful because there are US and EU versions that are not the same. Especially the US version really kind of sucks because the FDA hasn't approved new UV filters in a really long time. And the older generation UV filters that are approved for sunscreen products in the US are not very cosmetically elegant. So the US version does not have the same finish or benefits as the Japanese version. Um, so it's not as cosmetically elegant. And the newer filters generally tend to lend themselves to greater UVA protection. Um, with Japanese and Asian, Korean sunscreens, Asian sunscreens in general, there's a PA rating. It's PA and then a series of plus signs after it. The higher the number of plus signs, up to four, the higher the UVA protection is. So this is not only SPF 50 plus, which is good, but it's PA 4 plus. So that means that it has UVA radiation protection in the highest range currently available on the market. So this is what I'm using. I use this almost every day. Um, the 2015 version of this was the first like holy grail sunscreen that I tried. Japanese brands reformulate products on something like usually a one to two year cycle. So there were a bunch of versions that I didn't love in between then, but this, the new like 2023 version of this sunscreen is so good. I always do three fingers and I'll also explain this because I get a lot of like, what the hell, that's too much product. When sunscreen is tested and the SPF values are validated, they test it using two milligrams per square centimeter of product on human skin. That usually like it works out to about a quarter teaspoon just for face alone on a larger like a man's face. So for a woman's face or a smaller face, it would be a little bit less than a quarter teaspoon. I don't think that you need to like measure out your face or get a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon and measure out your sunscreen every day, but three fingers gets pretty close to a quarter teaspoon. Close enough is good enough. So that's what I do just to make sure that I'm getting enough. It's actually like slightly over a quarter teaspoon for me, which is a good thing as you'll see in a second, because I will always make sure that my sunscreen is applied in a very even layer. This is also important for sunscreen because what you want is for it to be distributed on your skin in as even a layer as possible so that you get the most even protection, like consistent protection all over your skin. So I'm going to take those three fingers and just apply them like, um, don't have to be super careful with this stuff because I am going to use a cushion puff to pat it in and spread it out. And you'll see, I just want to make sure that I get it everywhere. So I like to use Ruby cell cushion puffs for this next part of my sunscreen application. These are specifically designed to create a very even layer of product on skin without absorbing too much product. So these cushion puffs are originally made for cushion foundation, which you may remember if you've been following beauty for a while, were very trendy a few years ago. And I just find that these are absolutely perfect for patting in sunscreen to give me the best, most even layer of it on my face. So this is what I do in the morning. It's pretty quick. And this will also help the sunscreen to dry down well. So it usually cuts down on any pilling that I might experience with sunscreens. Although the nice thing about the Biore is I haven't found that it pills at all. Um, again, the sunscreen is water and sweat and humidity resistant. So it's kind of perfect for weather like today and for the activities that I'm getting ready for. With any sunscreen, you might hear that like, with chemical sunscreens, which this is chemical UV filters, it has to like absorb into your skin to work. So you need to give it time. That's not true. It starts to protect from UV as soon as it's on your skin, just like physical mineral filters. But I do give it about 15 minutes to set and form a strong film if I'm going to put on makeup. If I'm not gonna put on makeup, then like I put it on and I feel good to go right away. I am gonna put on a little makeup, so I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes. Of course, we're also going to do the neck and chest. Because again, like I have a lot of sun damage here. Unfortunately, like I live in Southern California. It's almost always sunny. I've spent much of my adult life running around with like low cut tops, being outside a lot. So there's just a lot to work with 
So I'll be very thorough too about covering my upper chest area so that that skin stands some chance of healing and the sun damage stands some chance of being repaired. So I've got that on. I do a little bit on my shoulders too, although I also use a different body sunscreen before I leave the house. So we'll just wait for 15 minutes and then I'll finish getting ready. Okay, finishing up. So I gave the sunscreen about 15 minutes to sink in. It's not greasy. It's not sticky at all. You can see it doesn't have any kind of white cast or anything. So I love it so much. Um, for yoga class, I don't have like a dedicated makeup routine. I just do like my normal makeup because I do this every day when I'm getting ready anyway. It's pretty minimal. So you probably won't see it like that much because there's not that much new to say about it. But I'll use like couple of tiny dabs of the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. So I don't like doing full face foundation. I usually just do it a little bit on certain areas just to even them out. So just a little bit between the eyebrows and then a little bit on the nose and just around the nose and mouth. Like for me, the purpose of foundation is just evening things out. I don't want to create an entire like flat canvas that's all the same color. It's really just to like ease any kind of redness that I might have just because skin is skin, human skin has different variations in color and tone. And my nose sometimes gets a little bit red because I have sinus problems and sometimes it just gets like kind of irritated from blowing my nose. Uh, just a little bit on my chin. That's it. Apart from that, I just like fill in my brows a little bit with the Etude House drawing eyebrow pencil. So I used to like fully draw them in all the way because my eyebrows used to be super crazy sparse. I use the Grande Brow Serum on my eyebrows and they've grown back in a lot over what they were after I destroyed them in the 90s over plucking like everyone else who grew up in the 90s. But I really just like use it to just fill in the sparse spot and flatten out the arch a little bit because I feel that for my face a flatter arch and softer brow is more flattering than a really high strong arch like regardless of what trends are going on. This is also why I don't want to do microblading like I've had it suggested to me before and it's just like if they don't do it right or they don't do it exactly the way that I like I'm going to be really unhappy with it until it fades so I'd rather not like it's pretty easy I'll probably screw them up a little bit because I'm trying to do it with the phone screen instead of a hand mirror and my eyesight sucks now but I mean just as a demo of basically how I do it is just again flatten out the arch fill in the sparse spot a little bit and then just use the broken ass brush to like <laughs> blend it out a little bit and I might go in with a hand mirror and fix later when I can see like I can tell that I didn't hit some gaps but it's also whatever it's just for yoga class so it's also not a big deal but okay I'm a little bit too type A to just leave that yeah there we go yep anyway that's just a little bit on the brows and then I love blush blush is my favorite favorite makeup item um, and I love cream blush and the blushes that I always use are the beauty pie wonder I think it's called super cheek yeah super cheek cream blushes in the pot I have five colors of these which most of them I asked for from the brand and then I think one or two of them might have been sent for sponsored content because I have had a fairly long-standing relationship with Beauty Pie. This is one of the ones that I just asked for because I basically wanted these blushes in like every color. It's fresh faced. It's a peachy cream blush and these are super easy for me to work with too. So they're very smooth, very creamy. They go on easily and then I just like stipple it in with a blush brush and they have this like nice skin-like finish they're buildable, so if I want more color, I just put a couple more layers on. I usually like just one layer, just for a little extra like life and pop in the face. And this is what I love blush so much for, because it'll give you like a little bit more polished and a little bit more lively face without going over the top. And I saw like the girlies on TikTok doing the blush right over the nose thing. I don't want to do like the full, um, you know, like the full on I have a fever 
blush look, but I do like the way that it looks when you go over the nose a tiny bit with it to just like unify it, bring it all together. And that's it. Besides that, I just like, if I want to, take a little bit of pressed powder. This is a Solasu pressed powder and it was discontinued forever ago. It just takes me like a million years to pan any kind of pressed powder product, so it lasts forever. Um, and I just dab that on the T-zone, like anywhere that could get more oily than the rest of my face. For this, again, like the point is just to even things out. It's not to like cover everything. And then if I'm in the mood for it, sometimes I'll use a spray to like meld it all together. So this was weird. Here's a little discourse on PR. Most of the PR I get, I'm aware that it's coming because the brands will reach out and ask me if I want it. Occasionally, just due to being on various PR lists at brands or at different marketing firms, I might get something that I had no idea was coming from a brand that I like haven't interacted with ever or haven't interacted with for like years and years. So Peach Slice is one of those. Um, I got PR from Peach and Lily like at the beginning, like within the first few months of starting my blog. And then I haven't really like done anything with them since and then I got this box of like the peach slices oil control line so the only product that I've tried from that box so far has been the oil control balancing mist but it turns out I like this um it's supposed to be obviously an oil control mist so the thing that's nice about using mists like this on makeup is that the little solvents in them can sort of soften they kind of like melt at the edges of your makeup and help everything to kind of melt together a little bit more so i suck at blending typically like i'm super not like a very skilled makeup person so this is just like a little extra help and it is nice to use a mist in summer it feels cool and refreshing and that's it like that's the whole makeup routine so all that's left is i'm just gonna put my hair up in a ponytail and i'll be ready so all that's left is just to put my hair up in a ponytail now for yoga class. Um, I don't really like putting my hair up a lot, just as a general rule, like as a look, I wouldn't put it up because my the back of my head is really, really flat. Um, because I don't know, I wasn't like held enough as a baby or something, like I didn't get enough tummy time. So as a result, the back of my head is flat. I had a roommate in high school who said I had like an almond shaped head. Um, anyway, but however, obviously I don't want my hair like flopping around and distracting me during yoga and like sweeping the floor anytime I'm in a downward dog or something like that. So I just put it up in a like simple ponytail. I had it in a bun the other day when I shot like a couple of progressions of sun salutations to just post on my Instagram and then it was killing me playing the video back because like yeah my head's just so flat um however it's whatever and my hair is like a little bit difficult right now because I curled it yesterday and so it's still a bit curled and fried but it's fine whatever so obviously if I leave it hanging out in a regular ponytail it will sweep the floor still so usually for yoga class I just like pull it halfway through and loop it like that I've seen so many cool ponytail styles on Instagram. A lot of them are like Chinese. They're from Douyin's from China. And I just like that hand coordination that these people have of being able to reach behind their head without seeing and like pull the ponytails out and twist them in certain ways to make it look really cute. Doesn't feel available to me. So that's just the simple yoga ponytail and that's it. I'm ready. Um, I appreciate you guys always for watching my stuff especially here on youtube because i'm super late to the party of making long videos but i am having a lot of fun because i don't have to like try to cut down everything i want to say to fit into like a super short video or a short instagram caption so thank you and um like and subscribe if you like this and i will keep doing this oh and here is my outfit <laughs>